thank you for participating in the Wellness Way brought to you by APC, ACP SoCal Region 3. My name is Desari and I'm a medical student at UCR School of Medicine and I'm representing the California ACP Chapter Region 2. Today I'm really honored to have Dr. Ware with me. I'm going to have him introduce himself. Um, Dr. Ware, can you be so kind as to tell us your um, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do? Yes, I am a primary care doctor. I work with seniors. Um, I largely treat a geriatric population, and that's not necessarily what I initially, the direction I initially saw my career going, but I really, really find it rewarding taking care of seniors, having goals of care discussions. I'm right now the director of primary care at Scan Health Plan. Um, so I lead a team of a few other physicians and a number of nurse practitioners, and I'm really excited to be here talking with you today. Desari, thank you. No, no, this is amazing. I, I think um, I, I had a few mentors that were geriatricians, and I believe that the kind of insight that they have to give, especially for wellness, is really is really high just because they do have patients that really need help with mental health and wellness a lot of their times in their practice. Um, before we go on, I just wanted to ask you a little bit of how did you choose your um, career path in medicine? So I, I didn't do a geriatrics fellowship. I kind of, I I actually did a primary care track uh, with my internal medicine residency. I always saw myself doing primary care, although with the internal medicine residency, you still spend about 80% of your time in the hospital, ER, acute care, ICU. So when I first got out of residency, I was actually much less comfortable with primary care than I was with hospital-based care, um, but I really wanted to give primary care a shot. So I I took my first job in primary care and it just so happened that the median age of my patients was above 75 years old. And through that, I realized how much I love taking care of geriatrics patients. So while I didn't go back and do a fellowship, I love the ability with geriatrics to not necessarily focus so much on guidelines, to focus on the patient in front of you and, and what are their hobbies? What do they like to do? What do they get like to get out of their day to day and tailor their care towards that? rather than prevention. It's, it's all about how can I make my patients day to day the best for them. I love that. I love that you, you found something where you could truly listen to the patient and you could, you could do a more patient centered care because I feel like everyone comes in with that kind of, you know, goal, but a lot of times just because of like the hecticness and the chaos of the hospital, sometimes we lose a part of that, but it's really great that you were able to find a little spot where you're able to achieve that. That's amazing. And I, and I will say that geriatrics, that's kind of like the whole mantra of the field. However, I think no matter what specialty, no matter what type of practice you're doing, the patient always comes first and you can, you can always meet the patient where they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, going off of that, because you did talk about any kind of like um, specialty, I guess a kind of question I have is what advice do you have for medical students like me and also current residents as they're kind of figuring out their path in medicine, what they want to do, what their goals are, all those kinds of things? I would say just be open to everything. That's what I did. I, I ultimately decided on internal medicine because I sort of liked everything. Um, and then, you know, I was intrigued by a lot of the subspecialties, but I kept my mind open and I wound up really happy with where my career is. The, the thing is, even if you wind up taking a little bit of extra time for your training, you can always um, find your way into whatever field, even if it, if it is a slightly um, uncommon path. So just keep your mind open and, and you'll probably find your way into something that, uh, that you love doing. I like that. And also like, I think it's not just open. I think you mentioned another thing is that even if it takes a little bit more time, as long as you're able to get to where you need to be, I don't think time matters. It's about, like you said, keeping your mind open and being kind of, you know, cognizant of everything and how you feel when you're in those situations. Right. Absolutely. Um, going based off of that again, I feel like these questions are going very hand in hand here. Um, I wanted to go into the wellness portion um, because when we're in each situation, we expect the absolute best of ourselves. And I guess coming into medicine, we've always been put at a very high pedestal uh, trying to get into this career. Um, 
and I would like to very much hear the answer to this question is how to handle perfectionism in medicine. How do you handle it? How do you advise um, students and residents to handle it? Um, what kind of advice do you have for us? Well, I think you have to acknowledge a few things. One being that even as doctors, people who are tasked with the enormous responsibility of taking care of people's lives, of their well being, we are human and mistakes are going to happen. But I think in the pursuit of sort of perfectionism, all we can do is do the best that we possibly can for our patients. So I've made mistakes in my career. Any physician has made mistakes. And at, if at the end of the day, I can tell myself, I did the best that I could for this patient. Yes, I made this mistake, but I, I did my best. Yes, there was this poor outcome, but I did my best for that patient. That's really all you can do at the end of the day. And the, I think it's important to admit when we don't know things, you know, I am looking things up constantly in my practice. When I, I once you get to a certain level of comfort with your own clinical abilities, you're comfortable admitting even to your patients, you know, I don't know, but let's find the answer to this, whether that's through a specialist consultant, whether that's through taking time to find that answer, doing some additional workup. At the end of the day, I sleep well at night knowing that I did everything I could for my patients. And that, that effort in the end of the day is probably not perfect, but as long as I'm confident that I'm giving the type of care to my patients that I would give to my mom, my wife, my siblings, then that's what I sort of hang my hat on. I think one thing that you said that made me kind of cringe a little bit was the, I don't know, because I feel like we're always expected to know what is the answer and you're always right. expected to get it right. So and we're taught by the Socratic method, right? So it feels, uh, you know, almost embarrassing when, when we right. get a question and we don't know, but what I found in my career, like, for example, when you go through our residence, it's really intimidating as an intern to say, you don't know, yes. but once you learn more, you get to the point where you're really confident about what you do know, you realize that the things that you don't know are things that you may not be expected to know. You're, you're comfortable admitting those things because you become more comfortable, comfortable with the knowledge that you do have. And it's, it, I don't know if it just comes with time, right. if it just comes with sort of confidence, but once you get to that point, that's when I think you're much more effective as a clinician. I think you're right. I think it takes a little bit of time and similar to what you said before, just being open to that. You might not know everything and that is okay. You know, exactly. just coming to that end. Um, I just want to thank you so much for sharing your knowledge today with us. Um, I know I learned a lot today and our viewers will definitely benefit from the advice that you shared. Um, so if you have any <laughs> ending remarks, please go on ahead. But I just want to thank you so much for the wisdom you shared today. No, I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you so much.